Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology forecast for the week between the 10th and the 17th of February 2018. So, what do we have in the skies this week? Well, Saturday is a sensitive day, the 10th. We have Venus entering Pisces. Venus loves being in Pisces even loves it a little bit too much. It be she becomes more naive and more romantic in Pisces, so much so that she can connect with almost anybody, sometimes with persons who do not deserve that connection instantly or at all. So it's a time that we can enjoy heightened romance in our relationship, and that's a beautiful thing, and more naivety, but we have to be careful and keep it real. Moon squares Chiron on Saturday the 10th. It's a day that we can be in touch or challenged by our inner aches and pains or challenge others. So just be sensitive towards yourselves and others. On the 11th, we have Mars on Antares. Mars, as we know, the old name of Mars is Aris in Greek. Ant Aris, opposing Mars, is a great giant red star in the group of Scorpio that takes away the limelight sometimes. But when these two planets combine, it's like you put Mars on steroids. It's Mars times Mars times Jupiter. <laughs> because Antares has the nature of Mars and Jupiter. It's like Mars on steroids. So we have here a double whammy uh, happening on the 11th so watch your aggression watch all your male energies on that day and put them in check it's a great day for physical activity or for anything that has to deal with sports and 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 winning but again be careful from getting hurt or from any accidents on that day the moon is also in Capricorn which is cold and judgmental and on Saturn the ruling planet of Capricorn so another double whammy on Sunday the 11th. Don't be too cold, don't be too judgmental, and don't be too male. <laughs> Whatever that entitles. Um, one more thing. Next Saturday, the 17th, we're going to have an exact alignment of Mars squaring Neptune in the sky. That's one of the aspects I hate <laughs> you know, I don't like it because it confronts us with a feeling of impotence it confronts us with a feeling that there's some things that are greater and stronger and unpredictable and that we cannot withstand that we need to succumb to and we can have power losses during this time or be challenged by outer circumstances and that make us feel as if we are powerless. It is also a time that we can connect our actions into something which is more spiritual or artistic or for the general good, for the general public. And that's a way to challenge that aspect and turn it into a good thing. On that week of this aspect, and we'll be feeling it throughout the week, we are much more sensitive to anything we digest. So food, drink, and of course, any kind of drug, and I'm talking about alcohol as well, we're much more sensitive to it. So watch what you digest physically and emotionally during this week and keep that hygiene at a high level. Understand that we're more sensitive this week and we should always ask ourselves whether it's a glass of wine or a puff of weed whatever it is i don't know what's your vice but are we using it or abusing it are we running away from something are we um running away from our uh, dismay and anxiety or are we actually doing it to heighten something or to advance something in our life and there's a big difference between the two 
Are we using it, utilizing it, or abusing it? So, on Monday, the 12th, uh, the moon is still in Capricorn, but this time it's on Pluto. So I want you to be less judgmental and not so dramatic. Okay, step away from your emotions and step away from being too judgmental and just let it slide. On the 13th, Moon square Uranus and Mercury square Jupiter. What is that all about? Mercury squaring Uranus makes it a day with a short fuse. We could lash out on people or people can lash out on us. We don't have so much patience. Mercury square Jupiter and that's an effect that will be there throughout the week, but is especially strong on uh, Tuesday, is about watching what we say and how we say it, and making sure that what we blurb, or that our navigation through life, or that our ideas and ideologies do not cause havoc, that we're not too extravagant, that we're not too indulgent, that we're not too sure of ourselves or proud of ourselves that what we say can stand on firm ground and, and on its own without our assistance and does not create negative circumstances for us after we blurbed it out. On Wednesday the 14th, nothing I want to say about the celestial configuration, but on Thursday the 15th we have a new moon and just a little later a partial social, uh, solar eclipse on the 27th degree of Aquarius, it's the uh, same line of uh, eclipses that continues the eclipse of August last year, the Great American Eclipse that was exactly opposed to it on the 27th degree or the 26th degree, I don't remember anymore, of Leo. So that all axis of Leo Aquarius is heightened again and things and themes that have occurred back in August last year can come back in our lives again. Of course, if you have planets on that axis or squaring it on those degrees of 26, 28, you'll be more affected by this eclipse. Although this is a partial eclipse, it's still potent. It will be more potent over Alaska, Argentina, uh, Chile, and Antarctica, I think, or something, but it won't be seen over most of the world, so it's not that strong, but it's still there. And a, a solar eclipse is always an opportunity for us to change, to change who we are and how we do things in the world, how we create things, and how, you know, change the light that radiates off our being. And the fact that it is in Aquarius, again, brings up the question, what am I doing for the group? Aquarius is about humanity, it's about higher aims, it's about the bigger picture, it's about the betterment of our fellow men, of our society, and of the world at large. And I need to ask myself, what am I contributing? Am I contributing <laughs> to make this a better world? Or am I actually part of the problem? And this eclipse is going to be conjunct Mercury, Juno, Hygieia and squaring Jupiter in Scorpio. What is that all about? Well, conjunct Mercury is our oh, our, 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 sorry, <laughs> our, our ideologies. Something that is feasible, something that is actually healing, something that is actually sustainable, something that is actually helping, aiding the betterment of society? Or are my ideologies and my thoughts and my words and my navigation through life part of the problem? Juno is about being faithful for, to something. Juno is Hera, the, the, the goddess of marriage and faithfulness. She's the wife of Zeus, Jupiter, and she really didn't like when he went and had all of these um, betrayals with nymphs and other female creatures in the old world. So Juno is all about devotion and, 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 and adherence over time to an idea or a concept. Being loyal to that. And 
here the question is asked, are we loyal to our ideologies? Are we walking the walk or are we just talking the talk? Are there things that we could be more faithful and, and, and uh, faithful and faithful too? I'm sorry. And of course, Hygieia is the goddess of hygiene and medicine. So is the state of health of humanity satisfactory right now? Or are there things that we need to heal? Are there things that we need to heighten the hygiene of? Squaring Jupiter in Scorpio, new revelations, new findings, <coughs> and excuse the, <coughs> the noise from outside today, it's just horrible. Um, new revelations and new findings coming up to the surface, and of course, the growth with Jupiter, could, and especially with Jupiter in Scorpio, could be unchecked. Have we overgrown? Has this growth become malignant? Are we overexpanding ourselves? Is this sustainable? And think about it. If there would be only a third of the people on this earth, first of all, it would be a festive occasion. We would see a human being. It would be interesting and it would be festive. Like in the old times, in ancient times, you know, when someone came up to your tent in the desert or in the wilderness, you would host them as if this was your family member. You would bring them in, wash their feet, bathe them, feed them, let them drink. And of course, later than that, want to hear all the information and the news they bring from far away. <clears throat> but it was a special occasion seeing a, a person, seeing a, a stranger. It's not so much today. We, we cocoon ourselves within our earphones and our screens because there's too much of us around. But only because there are too many of us around, we are dealing with the moral dilemmas that we are dealing with, with global hunger, with sustainability, with environmental control and, 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 and sustenance and, and healing and, and guardianship. With uh, uh, the change from a meat-consuming society into a vegetarian society. Just because we are so densely populating this earth, we are dealing with all these moral subjects that are going to eventually better us and make us, as that Aquarius demands, a better species, a more advanced species in a more advanced world. Ooh, so, it's an important time. And of course, every new moon is a time of emotional, mental and, and spiritual imprinting. So watch your energies in the day before, the day after. Remember that everything that passes through you is imprinted for the next lunar cycle of 28 and a half days. Try to keep that hygiene as high as possible. Inner hygiene. Friday, the 16th, the moon is going to conjunct Formalat, one of the old four royal stars. It's in the southern tip of Pisces or the leg of Aquarius and it has the nature of a, lo a lot of the nature of Neptune and uh, Jupiter. So it's great for any right brain activity. It's great for being in nature or just relaxing or, or doing anything that connects with the muses or with artistic endeavors, spiritual endeavors, or just being out in nature, as I said, meditating. It's a great time for uh, anything that has to do with the right brain activities, not so much for left brain activities. And Saturday is pretty much the same. Saturday is a really special day, 16th and 17th and 15th. They're all very special days. And I would really um, suggest that you do some kind of visualization during these days of how you would want your life to look during the next few months. Because Saturday the 17th, Mercury, the planet of navigation, enters Pisces as well. So again, we can have this feeling during the next few weeks that we might be not so sure of where we're going and, and where we, it is we need to head. Take that internal process, digest it. It's a good thing. 
it needs to float from the inner to the outer and um, don't be too mad of, on your, of yourself if you're not as sure of yourself as you usually are during the next few weeks and Mercury entering that Pisces arena is going to be in Kazemi in a superior conjunction with the Sun this is the time that visualization is required for the next couple of months and it's a beautiful time in which the planet Mercury the mercurial essence is heightened and we can actually uh, uh, um, we can actually visualize better the things that need to come true in our life and actually ask for that realization the moon is going to con conjunct neptune on that day again so again right brain activity no analytics uh, no calculations and it's going to square mars so it's going to heighten that square on that day very sensitive day at least at the evening of the 17th so watch that and become more stoic on that day and less involved with the turbulent feelings inside. That's about everything I wanted to tell you and I wanted to thank you for every comment you have on the video because since the algorithm of Facebook changed, uh, the viewing of these videos dropped radically and just because of your comments and shares, they went up again. So I want to thank you everybody and of course for private lessons, courses or uh, any kind of consultation in evolutionary astrology, you're welcome to uh, call me or contact me. Have a beautiful week. Thank you for listening. This is Boaz Fighter. Goodbye.